All right, guys, here we go. I've got all the parts that I 3D printed with my Mars 2 Pro resin printer from Elgu, and I will be getting a larger printer very soon. Right here, I'm just priming these. I've got some black primer and spray paint in one in a can. I just picked up at Lowe's. It's probably, I don't know, seven or eight bucks for that. And I took these outside and spray painted them. Uh, and honestly, I just did one coat of primer for the most part. I think I might have done two on the helmet. I think I, think I might have done two on the helmet. But I took these outside, let them dry. Uh, probably should have let them dry a little longer than I did. Uh, and then we come inside. And I wanted to do something cool to design with the shin armor. So I actually taped off some of that. I used frog tape. Like you can use scotch painter's tape or whatever else. I just happened to have some frog tape, which is why it's green. And I had this idea of painting a design on the front shin. When you see the final product, you'll see that I threw that out the window. Um, but I do have my airbrush here. For those wondering, I have an Iwata Revolution uh, and uh, just airbrushed some of that and painted some of the parts white so I could then take a sand uh, piece of sandpaper and scrape off some parts and uh, kind of weather it up a little bit, which is what you can see when I go here. So this particular uh, design on the shin armor I actually threw out the window, but here we are I'm showing you how to do it. Now, I will tell you on the next build, uh, I will change up the cam camera angles a little bit and change the lighting. This one, honestly, for my very first build, I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. And uh, so I wasn't really focused on recording, but I put it there. And uh, so the next one promises to be better. Uh, one does hope anyways. Uh, but I, I had a lot of fun with this guy and I spent a lot of time sanding and repainting and sanding and repainting. And one of the things I would definitely recommend is waiting on the paint to dry completely. Uh, I was a little impatient at times uh, with that. Uh, but here you can see me just kind of weathering this guy, uh, which is kind of funny to watch this going back because I completely changed the design of the paint scheme. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyways, uh, I am using water, so I wanted to wet sand this a little bit. With the resin parts, you absolutely need to sand the parts down or else you're gonna have that texture come through from the, the layers. It's not as bad as like a PLA print, but on a resin print, uh, you can still have those. So you wanna, you wanna sand those down. Breaking out the paintbrush, I went ahead and drew on a Punisher skull onto the chest with just a pencil. And here I am just taking some acrylic paint uh, that I've watered down a little bit, diluted uh, with some reducer, and I uh, literally just taking a paintbrush, painting it on there. As you can see on the front, I got a bunch of paper towels, I got paints, I made a huge mess, which is fine because I did this over and over and over a few times. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes we're better than others, but I felt like it turned out okay. Uh, there are multiple layers of white paint for the logos uh, or for the Punisher symbol on here and some of the other parts because uh, painting white on black, uh, as you can see right here, it doesn't go on, especially watered down. Uh, if I had not watered down the paint and I did do a test of this, then the paint would have clumped up and it wouldn't have looked smooth on the final product. So definitely had to water it down, which is fine. It just meant more layers. And uh, so that was something to learn. I, I figured I could just paint it in there, be done with it. Uh, but that certainly was, was definitely not, not the case. And uh, I had a lot of fun with this guy, but it definitely took a lot of time uh, and layers. So, uh, and I suppose, I don't know how many layers are on there, but it was quite a few. Definitely on the next one, I will be a little bit better at painting. I think this first one turned out okay, uh, but clearly I'm not, I'm not an artist, so that's that's definitely not a thing, but uh, I think it turned out okay. I don't know what the next design figure is gonna end up being for the very next one, but um, you know, drawing it on in pencil definitely helped because otherwise uh, that was gonna mess up. Now, 
I had an idea and I went out and bought stencil paper, stencil transparent paper for my Cricut. And I was going to print out a logo and put on there. Uh, but since we've moved, I don't have a clue where the hell my Cricut is. So that quickly went out the window, even after I took the time to go buy the transparent paper to do so. So uh, strike one up for moving and not knowing where anything is. Right here, you can see kind of the front cod piece in here, and I'm airbrushing some feet. Uh, I did 3D print the feet, uh, and they do have ball joints molded in, which is actually pretty cool. Didn't know if that was gonna be a thing. Uh, a lot of layers of paint on here, and then it ended up going to, um, yeah, well, I think we'll look, see in a little bit where I actually add some weathering with a sponge and some just dried out acrylic paint and kind of put on there. Uh, the airbrush in the backpack, um, I'm definitely not an expert at airbrushing, but I'm definitely getting better than my previous attempts on just some random stuff. Uh, so uh, I got better at mixing it. And I found some particular paints. I'll put a link in the description below uh, for this particular one that honestly just straight out of the bottle, didn't even need any reducing. It worked perfect in the airbrush, which was nice. Um, but um, if not, you can just buy some like $1 acrylic paint and some reducer and mix it and do that. Um, which I've gotten better at, but uh, this particular white paint uh, worked out pretty well. Now, definitely have to sand some parts. These are me uh, sanding some hand plates. The hand plates I printed actually I super glued on top of the actual hands that came with the body I bought. And after I painted the hands, which we'll see in a little bit, um, I actually just glued those on and here they are. But they definitely require sanding, just like everything else. Don't skip that step. It's very, very important. Uh, here are the hands and I'm just going to take that primer paint up. Got earlier, paint them black and use those in the actual figure. This particular step I think was pretty cool. So I painted that black base coat originally and then I painted white on top of it. And here I am taking the uh, sandpaper again. And I think it's like 600 grit or something like that. Um, and, and I'm literally just sanding off scuffs, making this thing for battle damage parts. Shout out to Ricky for the tips and videos and him. I'll definitely leave a link in the description below. But check out Clonecraft on YouTube as well, uh, where I was very happy to get a lot of help. Because honestly, without his help, definitely would have been a lot more difficult to make this happen. So uh, shout out to Ricky for that and his... Uh, So just some more weathering going on in the backpack. I weathered this one a few, I actually repainted the backpack a couple times because I wasn't happy with it. And I may even change it up even now after I've got a little bit of a finished product. Uh, but adding some weathering around it, when is too much? I don't know. I mean, it just all depends. This is a Punisher inspired clone trooper. So, I mean, can you really have too much battle damage? I don't know that you can. At least, you know, that's my opinion of it. So here we are taking a sponge and just some acrylic paint and just kind of dabbing it. I had a couple different types of gray. I had a lighter gray, I had a darker gray, like a charcoal gray. And then I actually, obviously you saw some of the, uh, or you haven't seen it yet, I'm gonna say obviously. Uh, there's some red in there as well for adding blood, which is pretty cool. Uh, super glued some parts on here and I did add some um, elastic straps as well. But here I'm just super gluing on the shoulder straps onto the chest plate. And then we'll have the super glued onto the back plate and it all works out pretty well in the end.
this is where the real fun started. Trying to put this thing together after working on this. I, I think my total build time is about 10 days because I didn't have time. So uh, between printing parts, getting paint, getting supplies, and just life, uh, this took me about 10 days. If I had to, if I had all the parts together, I'd say about three days because you want to let the paint dry. Um, but um, overall, it came together pretty well. I ended up adding elastic straps to the shoulder armor and I added a thigh holster, if you will, uh, a little later here and uh, to make that work. But I thought that worked out pretty well. Uh, it definitely was frustrating putting together the first time because the hands kept wanting to pop off um, because it's a stormtrooper with you know, forearm armor. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. I've got the build here and I'm actually pretty excited to show this off, but I want to give you some close-ups of what I've got accomplished here that you can compare them. I actually have Captain Rex from Hot Toys sitting right here. So we can uh, do a little compare and contrast situation. And for my very first one six scale custom build, custom clone build, um, I'm actually pretty excited about this. Now I thought about uh, just giving this guy away to one of the channel supporters, Patreon supporters. Uh, I thought about giving this guy away and then uh, then I had a second uh, advice uh, from uh, somebody who said, hey, look, you know, this is your very first one. You might want to keep this one and then compare it to one you've done in the future after you've done a whole bunch of these. And I was like, that's a very good idea. So um, I'm going to end up keeping this for myself and then we'll, maybe we'll make some other ones. But um, I, I'm actually pretty stoked for this. So I, I want to kind of talk about some of the issues I ran into this and, and uh, some of the uh, headaches. Uh, going into this because this was my very first one and I know uh, I've learned a lot going forward So first off, let's take a look at the very first helmet I painted so this is <laughs> and, and this is where my it, my problems come into play uh, Quite a bit. So we'll, we'll kind of zoom in on here. Uh, I want to take a look at the very first Paint job I went after this guy. So I, I laid a, a base coat you guys probably saw in the video uh, uh, Of the black primer as black it's primer and black paint uh, that on there and then I went on there and added uh, the white. Now I, I brushed the this white on. I didn't airbrush this on. I brushed it on. However, I didn't wait long enough in between layers for the acrylic paint to cure. Therefore, I got all this stuff going on. And this isn't weathering. I added. I literally this was brush strokes because I was impatient and didn't wait on the paint to dry. So number one tip I got to say I learned from this one to the next one is give the paint time to cure. Uh, whatever you think it is, like double it. It's crazy. Uh, the, the primer coat down here, I mean, 24 hours, uh, it was, uh, turned out to be work, uh, work better for me. And then this acrylic paint, it, uh, like many, many, many hours. I mean, it, it's just going to take a long process. Um, uh, but this one didn't go as I intended. So I just decided to start over now. Truth be known, I can sand this off, uh, reprime it and use it on another figure. Um, uh, but it, it was pretty, pretty hideous. So I didn't really. Uh, I wasn't really a fan of that, so I didn't want to use it. Now, on the figure itself that I actually did end up finishing, uh, I waited longer on pretty much all the parts for painting, so for that reason. So let's take a look at the head sculpt first uh, that I actually ended up with. And you can see like the comparisons, like clearly I changed directions just a little bit, obviously, I kind of messing around. Um, but uh, I, I think this actually turned out quite well. And uh, one of the things I was really happy with, and I didn't, wasn't 100% sure if I was able to nail it, and I don't, I don't think I really nailed it, uh, was I wanted to add the blood on the sides, and I actually added blood throughout the figure, um, but that was kind of an afterthought. I was like, man, Punisher guy, he would have some blood on him. Uh, so I figured what the hell is add some. So I just took a uh, brush, uh, wetted down the, uh, the red paint, and just kind of flicked it on there to get the little spots. Uh, I don't know if I recorded that part or not, but there's that. Uh, I took a uh, pick, like a toothpick, and added these hash marks on the side of the helmet. I also added some uh, on this thigh, as I just lost a hand, uh, just on the thigh armor right here, added some hash marks down there. And uh, so there's that. And then uh, I added some more weathering and, and sponge and splashes and stuff on the back, which I think worked out pretty good. But I, I didn't want to do over the top with it but I felt like I got like just enough weathering on it. Kind of makes sense. Uh, the pauldron, uh, I did uh, add a couple, I, I couldn't make up my mind. I added some gray over here on the center section, then I added some white, then I added some blood and, and I added some other red markings on there. And, and I thought that turned out okay. I didn't want to overdo it because I didn't want to take away from the helmet or the, the symbol. So kind of left that somewhat plain. Um, I decided to, and I need to redo this one. You see how this, this, uh, 
shoulder uh, arm, armor here is on. I put it on an elastic band. I made this elastic band just a little too long. So it stays up there, but it's a little too long. This one's much better. This one's more snug. And I added some hash marks uh, on there as well. Uh, and then on the back, we got all this going. So I kept the back fairly clean because I knew it was gonna have a backpack, uh, but I did kind of detail some of these back of the bicep armor. Uh, where his triceps would be with some white and there's some blood here as well. Now, as far as the backpack goes, everybody knows you, magnets are definitely the better way to go. Uh, so those are nice to have on there. So uh, that, that was a pretty nice touch and just a little super glue on the magnet there. And then there's a super glue magnet in the, in the inside of this. Uh, so it works out pretty good. Uh, the belt attachment, you can see you've got weathering back here with the, the detonator back here. And then obviously uh, what I decided to do you can see in here. One of the things I learned, uh, I, I added some uh, uh, some nylon strip, actually an elastic, elastic strips uh, behind the belt, glued back there uh, to keep that on there. It gives a little movement on there. That's nice. I, I, I would like to clean up this zone here. Uh, I probably should attach something on the inside of that, and get that a little, uh, but you can't really tell. I mean, honestly, you can't really tell. It's one of those things. As far as the, uh, the Punisher logo on there, uh, I drew that a couple different times. Wasn't sure exactly what I'm going to do with it, uh, but I honestly just took a pencil, drew on there, kind of eyeballed it. There's a lot of layers of paint on there. I had it perfectly clean where there was no shading, no uh, overspray on the sides, but I didn't really like that. When I got into weathering, I was like, oh, let's add some overspray uh, on the uh, skull, and I think that looked better. And then obviously I added some blood splatters in there. Uh, and then on the underpiece, there's some uh, blood splatters in there as well. Um, so I, I'm really kind of digging this. On the holster, which I did 3D print the holster as well, and the blaster, they're both printed. Uh, I added some uh, elastic strap right there, just glued that on there. And then down, for, these are typically up here if on ARC Troopers, kind of have a little uh, strap, but I wanted to do like a thigh holster kind of deal for the extra, uh, you know, ammo cartridges in there. Uh, I, I kind of I dig that, so I did one for each. Uh, I had to do that a couple times because this one I made too small of the strap and then I made it too big and then whatever. So now it's Goldilocks and it's perfect. Um, and I did glue those in so, and get your hand out of here. I did glue those in so they wouldn't come out because I didn't really see much reason to take them out. Um, down on the lower portion, you see it's got all kinds of dirt and grime and, and blood and just all kinds of mush going on down there. And I think that looks cool. I did one set where I painted the inside of these black uh, and I may, maybe on another one do that, but I kind of liked it being a little cleaner. So I kind of like that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Normal six scale ball joint. You can actually see it in there. I move that up. You can see the ball joint. So, uh, yeah, not bad, huh? Kind of dig it. Anyways. Uh, hopefully that's in focus because I'm using a different camera right a second. But uh, anyways, kind of dug that uh, all around. There is an antenna on the helmet. It does move if you want it to. It's just pegged in, so there's that. Uh, and then uh, a little uh, paint application going on on the uh, wrist guard there. And then another one on this one here. So that's kind of what I got going on. Now, the hands pop off because of the armor. I will have to figure out how I want to deal with that. But I wanted to show this because here you can actually see some of the paint has kind of wore off of that joint because I just painted it and then on the hand down here at the bottom of the hand. Now that doesn't bother me too much, but there may be a better way to do that, which I'll try and discover that. Uh, but as far as the paint um, application, uh, I think these uh, these turned out pretty good, honestly. I kind of dug that, just kind of made that up as I wanted to. I have two sets of hands, I have two relaxed hands, and I have two uh, weapon holder hands. And um, overall, I think they look pretty stinking good. Now, as far as comparing this to Captain Rex, which is an actual hot toy figure, uh, just size-wise, um, here we go. You can kind of see them side by side. They, I think they look pretty stinking good. Now, uh, this guy may be a little bit taller, Maybe not, actually. Maybe it's just an optical illusion. What's going on? They're actually, pretty, he's, a little, he's a little bit taller. He's definitely a, bit, a little bit larger, but an ARC Trooper armor uh, compared to Captain Rex, uh, who's gonna be a little bit more slender, I think it makes total sense. And certainly this, this pauldron on the top uh, probably has something to do with it. Uh, but I very much think these two work well together. I have no issues with them whatsoever, but I guess what we need to do is see what this guy looks like standing up and some better lighting and Get our final thoughts. So as we got our, our trooper posed up here, uh, just a couple things to note on the 
difficulties on some of the build. One, the gauntlets uh, have the typical Stormtrooper, Clone Trooper uh, issue of popping the hands off. So that's just one thing that's kind of a, a difficulty. And then because I painted the hands uh, and they're not like dyed black or made out of black resin material, whatever it is, uh, the paint chips off on that. So that kind of sucks. I'm probably gonna have to find a different solution for that. I have a ton of, you know, just regular clone trooper hands from Hot Toys that I could certainly use and repurpose, but I wanted to kind of go through this method first and, and see how that turned out. But that's one, one of the things. Uh, if you, anybody's got any solutions on, on that problem, uh, you know, put them in the comment section. Um, so that that's one thing that popped off. Uh, I did break one, I think I might have turned this one elbow uh, brace or elbow uh, piece uh, kind of snapped. Uh, I can glue it back together. It really doesn't bother me for this first build. Kind of one of those things that's just part of the process. And uh, overall, I'm pretty, pretty stinking happy with it. I mean, the weathering, I'm sure I'll get better uh, just over time. I'll get better at the weathering part. Uh, but I think like the coloration, I think works. I think the, uh, the blood splatters, I think works. And, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of, I kind of like it. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you haven't already. Um, but, um, yeah, I kind of, kind of dig it. Uh, the ankles, uh, on this guy, uh, since the feet are literally 3d printed feet, uh, that luckily from the files we got, uh, have ball joints already molded into them, which is super cool. Um, they are, they stand, but they're not the, they're, they're better than some other figures I've had in the past. Um, I, I one person, Ricky, I think, uh, super glues his into the feet that might give me some more stability. So I may do that. The other thing I'm going to do, and I should have done it already is I'm going to sand the feet flat because these are like arched feet. So get them to balance is a little bit of a trouble, which is why I've got them on the stand. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sand those, uh, a little more flat. Uh, I was talking to my buddy Greg Cook about that, uh, and um, yeah, just overall, I, I think it's pretty, pretty good looking. I in some of the areas I thought I might have gone overboard with the with the weathering, um, but honestly, I think it looks pretty stinking cool. But that's just my opinion, and I uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So the next set of these, so I've already got some more printed. We're going to do another set. Leave your comment down below your suggestion on what style of trooper we should do next or add to the list of ones I'm going to make. And uh, I'd love to hear from you guys on that. And then let me know your thoughts on this. Are you going to get into uh, customization or, you, or is this something you're interested in seeing more of on the channel? And uh, I, I think uh, I'm definitely going to have some fun with this. But I'd like to hear from you guys. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so. We're going to share more of this content on the channel. There will be some links below. Uh, for some uh, Facebook group to help you out if you want to get into this kind of stuff, the specific one. And uh, there's a YouTube channel, which I probably already mentioned, uh, Clone Craft. Uh, shout out to Ricky for the uh, huge assist on this, uh, for being able to help me uh, make this happen. So can't wait to see more. And as always, click what you like. See you next time.